Orpheus, the greatest musician of all time, and his bride, Eurydice. His was the unluckiest of wedding days. Son, for he brought you two together. If that is true, if that passion moved you once, then listen to me. I've tried to master this grief, and I can't. I understand we all come here in the end, but my bride, you were see, will soon enough be your citizen in the rightness of her years. I'm asking for a loan, not a gift. If you deny me, one thing is certain. I want you to keep me here as well. As Orpheus spoke, the pale phantoms began to weep. Tantalus was no longer thirsty, and Sisyphus sat up on his rock to listen. Orpheus, stand up! Turn around. Eurydice. Your song has moved us, Orpheus, and you may have on one condition. As you ascend and leave this place, you must not, until you turn and pass our gates, look at her. If you look at her before you reach the sunlight, she is ours forever. Hermes will accompany you. Remember, hesitation or doubt in our gift must be returned. A simple enough condition? It ought to. The sinner led the way, ascending that sloping path to the murk. A long way they traveled, almost all the way. But you know what happened. Concerned for her, or Maybe not quite believing it wasn't a cool delusion, a dream, or a mirage. He turned. Farewell! That was his last sight of her, but he saw it again and again. Farewell! Is this the story of love and how it always goes away? Farewell! Is this the story of time and how it can only move in one direction? Farewell! Is this the story of an artist? And the loss that comes with sudden self-consciousness or impatience. Farewell. Orpheus and Eurydice, number two. Rainer Maria Rilke, A.D. 1908. I said to myself, they had to be behind me. I said it aloud and heard it fade away. They had to be behind me. But their steps were so soft. I 
If only I could turn around just once. But looking back would ruin this entire work, so near completion. And I could not fail to see that. Those other two that followed me so softly. The goddess pleading with her messages. A golden crown above the shining eyes and the slender staff of the lot in front of him. And little wings fluttering at his ankles. And on the front line, barely touching it, she. A woman so loved that from one liar there came more lament than from all lamenting women. And that a whole world of lament arose in which all nature reappeared. Forest and valley, road and village, field, stream and animal. And that around this lament world, even as around our other earth, a sun revolved, and a silent star from heaven, a lament heaven with its own disfigured stars. So greatly was she loved. But now she walked behind the graceful god, her steps constricted by the trailing grave clothes. Uncertain, gentle, and without impatience. She was deep within herself, like a woman heavy with child, and did not see the man in front or the path ascending steeply into life. Deep within herself, being dead filled her beyond fulfillment, like fruit suffused with so mystery and sweetness she was filled with her vast death, which was so new that she could not understand it as it happened. She had come into a new virginity and was untouchable. Her sex had closed with a young flower at nightfall, and her hands had grown so unused to things that the gods' infinitely gentle touch of guidance hurt her, like an undesired kiss. She was no longer the woman with the blue eyes who once had echoed through that holy song. No longer the wide catches sent an island, and that man's property no longer. She was already loosened like long hair, torn out like fallen rain, shared like limitless supply. And when abruptly the god put out his arm to stop her, saying with sorrow in his voice, he has turned around. She could not understand and simply answered, Who? Far away, dark before the shining exit gate, someone or other stood whose features were unrecognizable. I stood and saw how on the strip of road, Among the meadows, with a mournful look, the god of messages turned to follow the small figure. <coughs> Already walking back along the path, her steps constricted by the trailing grave clothes. Uncertain, gentle, and without impatience.